So, um, yesterday we, um, not yesterday, last week we started Surah Kausar and mostly we talked about the background of Surah Kausar that in what circumstances the Surah was revealed. So, and uh, we talked a little bit about um, what people used to think about, you know, having sons and why it was so important for them because they thought that this is how the lineage is going to continue. And since Prophet Muhammad only had daughters and Allah also took his son back, in that case, those who were against Prophet Muhammad was very rejoiced and happy that his lineage is not going to continue. So most likely there will be nobody to carry on his mission. That was the idea that people had. And you know, when people have small minds, that's how they think, like he doesn't even have a son who's going to carry on his message because that's all they ever saw. Um, and I think the question I left you with was, um, what is al -Kawthar? So does anybody know what is al -Kawthar? Okay, yeah, I know it has been Eid vacation. So yeah, we were not able to do anything, that's fine. So uh, the surah started keeping the background in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took Prophet Muhammad's son back to him. You know, he had a son and of course he loved him just like anybody would love his son. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided and it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom and decision that he decided to take him back, which means that his son passed away, he died. Now he was sad, extremely sad, just like anybody would be because of, you know, death of a child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is con consoling Prophet Muhammad Sallam by saying, indeed, we have given you al kawsar Okay, in other words, yes, you don't have your son anymore with you, but instead you have, we have given you al kawsar I also talked about the fact that, what does it mean by I gave you or I have given it to you? I gave you might also mean, especially in Arabic, in Arabic, you know, ata also can also mean that, you know, just giving it, I'm giving it to you. But ata means just, given it for life and this is yours now you are the owner of it and what is al kawsar i know two meaning two meanings of al kawsar uh, number one is of goodness extreme goodness and Number two, which is a very, very common meaning by which we also know is it's a river in Jannah. Can I make this smaller? I don't know. Yes, somebody was saying something. So basically the first feeling is basically like abundance. Say that again, I can't hear you louder. The first feeling is like abundance, right? Yes, abundance, that's right. Like extreme goodness, extreme nice things, a lot of nice like goodness in his life. Uh, the second one, which is very common, is that it is said that Prophet Muhammad would be given a gift of a river in Jannah, which is said to be, um, I mean, the 
it won't be like water it would be sweeter than honey it would be whiter than milk and it is said that the day of judgment would be for I'm forgetting how much but it's like it will be thousands of years long one day of judgment will be like a thousand of years long and you know people will be standing and waiting but those people who would enter jannah and those who will enter jannah prophet sallam would say would, was in, in one hadith prophet sallam said that find me here find me at al kausar you will find me here and he would be when his own hands giving people to drink from this and once people would drink from this they would never feel thirsty again that's that's how you know uh, this water or whatever drink of this uh, river that's it, it is going to be and prophet sallam is going to it's just like you know when you enter some place and there's a welcome drink and welcome drink is always like kind of exotic kind of a drink and then people who are serving drinks are you know sometimes it is said um they are you know the uh, the hosts they are serving so that's kind of a impression it is that this is kind of a welcome drink for people it's going to be exotic it's going to be extremely um delicious and it's going to look great as well and prophet sallam would be there whoever wanted to meet him he would be there so so that's what we have about al kausa so the but the bottom line here is that it's giving that idea that that's not the destiny that's not your destiny yes you are going through a hard time right now you just lost your son but this is not the end of the world for you because you will find your son back in jannah you will find everything else you will be rewarded for everything else and more you will be the host in jannah welcoming everybody else you'll be kind of the leader of everybody the entire muslim ummah in jannah so it's kind of a way of saying don't be sad the reward is coming don't worry about it so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consoling prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay so maya you got it yes okay so i have written it down here the meaning and um so that's what uh, if you have any questions let me know okay let's go to the next ayah okay so now allah subhanahu wa taala said that i have given you extreme goodness and i have given you this river in jannah so now what does allah want in return allah bestowed so much blessings on prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so now what does allah desires what does allah want prophet muhammad prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam why is allah giving him so much and what should he do when he is given so much what should he do yes miral let's see this one um so um i think what allah would want in return is um praise mm -hmm. good yes and um okay like praise or i guess you can say glory in a way praise yeah that that's good because you know alham when we say alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin what do we do we praise allah subhanahu wa taala for everything that he has given us and it's not even enough even prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would pray like he would wake up at night and he would pray almost all night so hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha would say why do you pray so much i mean you're already forgiven allah has already forgiven you allah has already given you jannah why do you pray so much so what would he say shouldn't i thank allah for that you know allah has given me so much and that would be so mean of me if i don't at least thank you know somebody gives you so much the least we you can do about it is thank that person right 
And if you keep on using the blessing that that person gave you, the thanking should also be continuous, right? So it's not just one time you thank. Take example of your parents. Like it's, it's, it's never going to be enough when you thank. You cannot just thank once uh, in a year, for example. I'm only going to thank my mom on Mother's Day, and that's it. For everything, I'm going to give her one card on Mother's Day, and that's it. That should be enough. Is that so? That's not enough, right? We should be thanking them over and over again for all the effort they do for every time they cook for us, for every time they are providing us, for every time they buy us something, we thank them over and over again. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing us continuously. There is not a single time that Allah takes away any blessing. The oxygen never stops. Our hands, feet, eyes, they don't stop working anytime. You know, the technology that we use, it sometimes just stops working. Internet stops working sometimes. But does our organs stop working? They don't. When they do, yeah, we are sick, then it does. There is wear and tear, of course. But the basic thing is all those, the blessings that we have, Allah has just given them to us continuously and we don't pay anything. You go to the hospital one time and you pay for things. You know, even if you need oxygen, they're going to charge you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't charge us anything. So the least we can do is thank Allah for everything. What if he takes it away? Can we do anything about it? No, we cannot. Anything else you want to say, Ahmad or Miral? Ahmad. Um, I have one question. Um, so if uh, you know how when I said why Allah wants Allah wants praise in the Quran, because mm -hmm. um um Allah awarded um Muhammad um um Prophet awarded Muhammad. God. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, I so what would happen? So um. We also play every day. Mm -hmm. So since Papa Muhammad played every, uh, the whole night, mm -hmm. but we don't. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Is it because he just plays? He chose to. Yes, that's a very know, good but... question. Yes. And the thing um, is, there's a reason why Allah chose him as the prophet of Allah and not anybody else. Not even anybody else at that time. He was handpicked. You know, there is no qualification for Allah to pick somebody as a prophet, like they should have this degree or this thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows he is the creator. So he picked him because he knew that he is the most suitable person for this job. And that's the kind of a human being he was. Shaitan would not be able to attack him. That's the thing. For us, we are weak. We are weak human beings. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I mean, we, we do pray five times, but we don't always pray all night. A lot of people among us also do it. But can they become prophet? No. That's what Allah's will. Allah chooses whoever, you know. So Allah chose all the other prophets and Allah chose Prophet Muhammad Wasallam for all the right reason that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Okay, okay. So coming back to the point that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given him al kausar. So what should he do? So fasalli means so pray. This word salli. This is from the word salah that we use for namaz. Okay, and fa means so. So fa means so, and salli. Salli is like kind of an order. Pray. Fa, so, salli, pray. Li rabbika. Who knows the meaning of li rabbika? A very, very easy one. So, Maya? Yes. What does the word li rabbika mean? If you don't know the meaning of li, it's okay. Rabbika, meaning? Oh. 
I don't know. Come was on, Samaya. Rob, we got came. That we did? Yeah, Rob. We did so many times. We explained. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The word Rob came and we discussed it a lot. Anyone else? Lord. Yeah. Yes, she is. Good job. Lord. Rob means Lord. Ka is for the pronoun for your. Okay, so these words we should be, these are most common words, but now we should be remembering them. So, Lirabika to your Lord. Li is for two. Okay, and ka is for your. Okay, so pray to your Lord. One her, wa means and, and anhar means sacrifice. So pray to your Lord and sacrifice. So, okay, so uh, to Ahmad's point, what people, what Prophet, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Prophet Muhammad to do when he has given him al kawsar what you should do, pray to your Lord. One har and sacrifice. Yes, Miral? So um basically um for um uh, so when I was um so pretty alone and sacrifice um uh I noticed something that um Prophet Muhammad prayed almost all night. Mm -hmm. So did he sacrifice his sleep. Sacrifice being what? Say that again. Didn't he sa technically sacrifice his um sleep for Allah because yeah. when he prayed he prayed for almost the whole entire night wow excellent yeah actually so I never thought it that way yeah. you're right he did just that, sleep yeah. think about it now just sleep what did he sacrifice for Allah's mission what did he sacrifice for Allah's mission his entire life right everything all he was doing was spreading Allah's religion. That's all his life was all about. So you're right. Very good point that he sacrificed his sleep. But think about it. What else did he sacrifice? Practically everything. Everything that he had, he sacrificed. But mostly the meaning that I saw in the books of um, Tafsir, is related to the actual sacrifice which we actually just did on Eid. What is that? I think though. Yes. Animal sacrifice, right? Right. So that is what a lot of uh, Mufassirin, a lot of people who, who are the experts, they thought that this means here. And why is that so? I mean, that's a very deep point if you are able to understand that. And it goes back to the fact when we talked about that Prophet Muhammad his lineage did not continue. He did not a son that got married and had other sons, but his legacy continued. That's what we talked about yesterday, uh, the other day, right? His lineage did not continue, but his legacy did. Where did Prophet Salam's legacy came from? Uh, wait, I'm just saying, you said yesterday, I'm giving Friday. <laughs> yes, I, I was then, I corrected myself, I said the other day. So, I said, remember, the lineage did not continue, but legacy did. Where, where was his legacy coming from? I know it's a difficult question. His legacy, remember Kaaba? that he prayed to, the prayer is done facing where? Kaaba, right? Who built Kaaba? Ibrahim Ibrahim and Ismail 
And Prophet Muhammad actually belonged to the children of Ismail alayhi salam. So one, praying facing Kaaba is actually following Pro uh, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam's legacy and sacrifice. What is that? Who do we remember when we sacrifice? Again, same thing. Prophet Ibrahim and Prophet Ismail alayhi salam. That is the legacy. That's the exact legacy that Prophet Muhammad continued. And to this date, what do we say when we pray? Um, when we are praying and we sit down in Tashahud, we say, uh, uh, we say uh, uh, Durood on Prophet Muhammad right? Allahumma salli ala Muhammadu. Everybody knows that? Right? Yeah. Which durood we do that? We say salams to Prophet Muhammad Sallam and we say salams to Ibrahim alayhi salam because Ibrahim alayhi salam was Prophet Muhammad Sallam's in a way father, a few generations up. So that is that Prophet, in a way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding Prophet Muhammad Sallam that here, you don't need lineage you have a legacy already you are following your father your forefather ibrahim salam. you don't need anything like that all you need to continue is to follow your father and the generations and generations who come after you are going to follow you you don't need you are not you know in need of sons to carry on your legacy you know don't need boys to do that you already have what you need. Got it? So I go, let me finish. Last ayah, inna. Inna mean, means indeed. Shani'aka. The ka in the way end is again the same pronoun as right here, your. Okay, shani'a means enemy. Your enemy and who was his enemy all those people who were happy and those who were saying that prophet muhammad does not have a son anymore and he does not have a legacy and you know and he does not have a lineage and all those things those who are very happy about it those same same, same people allah is referring to Hua, he avatar The one cut off. Very deep thing. People who were Prophet Muhammad's enemies, they had kids, they had sons. And according to them, according to their thought, their lineage is going to continue. They are not Aptar. Prophet Muhammad is Aptar. But Allah said, no. You are not, they are. And why is that so? Because you are from Ibrahim alayhi salam's legacy. You are, for, you are his follower and you will have millions of followers. And we see that he has. Whereas your enemies, nobody even know them. They are gone, died, buried, dusted. Right? So... That's the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically, so as just summarizing it, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is um, consoling Prophet Sallam, telling him that yes, he lost his son, but Allah has replaced it with the gift, which is a beautiful gift of Al Kawsar. And what Prophet Sallam is should do is to continue the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam by praying and doing sacrifice. And just don't worry about your enemies. They don't know what they're saying. They don't even realize what they're doing. Your name is not going anywhere. Your legacy is not going anywhere. So just don't be sad. So that was the uh, summary of the surah. We are out of time. Otherwise, we would have discussed, um, you know, some lessons, some more lessons to it for 
especially for our own selves as well. Uh, inshallah, we'll try to take up some time before we start the next surah tomorrow. So we can, uh, you know, discuss some lessons. Do think about it and think how do we apply these surahs to our own life? What, what does it tell us? I mean, yes, this is about Prophet Salam and his legacy. But what does it teach us? Because unless you learn this, there is no point. There's no point doing the translation unless we become a better person every single day. Our comparison is with our own self. Me, am I a better person today than I was yesterday? That's what our um, goal should be. So whenever we are doing these surahs, whenever you do the explanation, think about yourself. How are we going to improve? How are we going to become a better person? Because in the end, our goal is to enter Jannah. And our goal is to drink al kawsar from Prophet Muhammad's hand. May Allah make us, all of us, among those. Ameen. So, ameen. It is Akallah khair. Inshallah, I'm going to see you all tomorrow with another surah. Uh, and do think of reflections. I'm going to ask in the beginning of the class. Okay. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika na shadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Subhanakallah. Subhanakallah. Assalamu alaikum.